Welcome back to KC Creations and this is part two of our catch all caddy. So at the moment what we need is pockets A and B, C and D. And we're going to take the bindings for our pocket A and B. We're going to bind the top of those. And then we're going to take the binding for pocket C. And we are going to bind that. Now we need to bind the six and a half inch side. Yeah, that one. The top. And then as soon as I've done that, I will come back because pocket D has a zipper. So we'll stick a zipper on. Alrighty, so pockets A and B are completely finished, and then pocket C is done also. And then I went ahead and stuck the zipper on pocket D, and then you just put the binding on the top of the zipper. So that's done. We sit them aside with our handles as completed. Then we move on to the dividers. So what you're going to need are your main and lining fabric for divider A and B. Then what we do is take divider A and sew them together on the top side of your fabric if you have a directional fabric. So you sew them together with a quarter inch. Then take that to your iron and press it. Press it down to set your seam. Turn it in this way. And then press it towards the lining again when it's opened flat. Press it towards the lining. Then totally bring it right way round, line up the bottom of your fabric and then press it again and that will create your faux binding at the top. So you do that on both A and B dividers, then turn it right way back again, wrong way back so right sides are facing, bring your fabric down to meet that. That's how you get your faux binding so you can press it. It should already be pressed but I, I give it another press when the right sides are facing just to help make this stay lined up because I don't, when I'm doing you know piece of fabric like this I myself feel comfortable in not pinning it or um, clipping it so I just leave it and run it through the machine that way so once you've done that turn it right way in give it a good press down here give it another good press up here and then you have one completed divider then it's time to trim the edges. Now divider A gets trimmed down. It will say on your pattern under step 4.7. It will tell you the trim size that you need to cut divider A down to. Then you just repeat steps. If you haven't done it at the same time as divider A, you repeat what you just did with divider A with divider B. And then it will also tell you on the final step of divider B to trim it down to a set size also. So you just trim equal amounts off each end. That way your stabilizer is centered. So don't just trim, say if you have to take off half an inch, don't take half an inch just off this one end. Take a quarter off this end, quarter off the other end, that way 
your stabiliser is going to stay centred in the middle of your divider. So I'll go ahead and just finish off divider A and then we'll be right to continue on to doing the markings on here to create our bellows. Once both of your dividers are sewn to create the faux binding and then sewn at the bottom turned right way in then what you want to do is starting at one end so right along the very edge all the way down to the bottom and you probably can't see it on this one on this side so I'll turn it over so you sew just right along the top all the way to the end and then sew an eighth of an inch down this side to the end and then sew an eighth of an inch again all the way along the bottom and up the other side and then just remember to lock your stitch by doing a little bit of a back stitch there do that on both dividers then what you need to do is look at your pattern and we'll start with divider A it will have some measurements in there and what you need to do is on the lining side of your fabric there are three measurements you need to mark so I have the wrong one so on the lining side mark your three measurements from each end measuring in from each end so you have your first one your second one and your third one and then do it again from the other end mark it with something that you can see easy and that is easy to remove then on the other side you also need to do this and what you need to do is the first one the third one and the fourth one mark them in the same color but the second measurement mark it in a different color because that is your sew line to attach it to your bag so you don't want to be sewing that one to create your pleat and the same on the other side so you mark your first one your second one is a different color mine's a bit hard to see because of my fabric so there's my first mark my second mark I've done it in black and then the third one is done in red and the fourth one is done in red and then what we're going to do is we're going to take this to our machine we'll start on the main side and we will fold it on the line and then just stitch an eighth of an inch from the faux binding down to the bottom and then you'll do it for the next one as well miss this one the one that you marked in a different color do not sew that one but then sew this one and then do the same on the other side and then we're going to flip it over and we're going to do the same on the back so we will fold it stitch an eighth of an inch on each line so I will do that and then we will go on to the next step okay so I have sewn all the top pleats so you just sew an eighth of an inch from the bottom of the faux binding all the way down to your seam at the bottom pivot and sew all the way back up again so I've sewn all those together don't forget to miss that one that you marked in a different color also um, remember too that if you've got a different bobbin different bobbin color when you're sewing this you're sewing your main and your main so you may need to change your bobbin color otherwise you're going to end up with you know in my case a cream bobbin and a top black thread so just change that and then it's time to go on to the other side and we just reverse what we done so we sew our pleats 
where we've marked I will do that and we'll return so we've completed our pleats on the main fabric side all the way along and once you do them on the main fabric side you then turn it over to the lining and do the ones on the lining as well except for the one here that you marked in a different color so once you have all those done it should then measure 13 and a half inches from end to end if you've done the measurements all correctly it should measure 13 and a half inches let me grab my ruler get it so and there we go mine is just shy of 13 and a half because I accidentally when I was trimming my bag ends um, main bag pieces I uh, accidentally cut it half an inch too short so I've had to adjust my bellows accordingly but that one is complete so we can sit it aside with the pockets that we've done and then it's time to pretty much repeat that for the other one so you just get in mark your lines on the main and on the lining side so all your pleats and then this divider divider B should measure 13 and a half also mine is just shy of the 13 and a half and then that is done then we move on to the side strip and what we're going to do is take our binding pieces and bind the ends of our side strip so we're going to bind both ends of our side strip and then you need to mark your main lining side with two marks measuring in from this end and it will show you on your pattern um, number 5a the measurement that you need for here and then you do the same on the other side also then it's time to attach the pockets so we will take pocket C which is the one the little one with the binding and we're going to lay it like this just a fraction below that mark and then we're going to stitch that down when you stitch it down you're then going to flip it up and stitch down across and up also so once we stitch it down here sorry I was out of frame there once we stitch it down here you then flip it up and then stitch down all three sides so I'll do that and then we'll move on pocket C is totally sewn down now And then I went ahead and I done pocket D. So same thing as with pocket C. Sew it down first with the flap this way. So the pocket is this way. 
and you sew it across and then you fold it up and start at the top of your zipper tape sew it across bring it down bring it across your bottom and up the other side so pocket D is totally done nice clean looking pocket so that is finished now so we'll sit it aside along with the dividers and the handles and the other pockets that we've done next we grab the sleeve and what we want to do is on this sleeve measures say for argument's sake 12 and a half by um, 18 and a half they're not the correct measurements but just argument's sake so what we're going to do is on the 18 and a half inch side we are going to fold it under a quarter fold it under a quarter again and then just sew along the bottom so that would bring it down to a neat 18 inches instead of 18 and a half and then we are going to fold it in half this way so, so a half inch seam along here then we will adjust it so our seam is in the middle like so and then we will sew across the bottom and then clip the corners and turn it right way out so I'll quickly do that and come back and show the final piece stabilizer sleeve is all complete now so I sewed the half inch down the middle put it in the center and pressed it I also went one step further than that um, in the pattern it doesn't say anything about the raw edges on this seam so what I done is I know it's going to be turned in the other way but I folded it under um, till it met here and then I used a bit of fabric glue and glued it down I would have liked to have stitched it but you know being a cylinder you can't um, you can't stitch unfortunately you can stitch it this way on your machine but you can't stitch it this way so I just took it that one step further and and glued that down and that's just going to protect those edges and then I sewed across the bottom clipped my corners in and now we'll turn him in the right way and um, that is then uh, a lot of the work for the actual bag done um, we just got to do the binding which I have done poke out my corners go nice stabilizer sleeve I just take that over and give it a bit of a press but that is all complete now ready to be set aside and then we just have the binding here ready to go and then other than that the only thing left to do is to bind the actual top of our bag sides so essentially the main part of the bag so they're both bound and now it is on to the actual assembly because everything else is done so what I might do is I'll end this video here and upload it and then 
I can start on the next one on attaching the handle handles, the dividers, the side strip and the binding and then the bag will be complete because we have done pretty much the bulk of the work now. So thank you very much everybody for joining me. I uh, hope you found this instructive and helpful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you don't mind. Uh, maybe tell your friends. They might find it helpful if they're like me. I'm a visual learner. Um, that's why I'm doing these videos. I have seen so many on my Facebook group that I'm in um, are having issues with the patterns because they're visual learners. So I thought, well... It takes me a bit, but I can do the patterns. So if I create the videos and put them up, hopefully that will help others. So let your friends know about my channel and uh, feel free to share my video. Um, feel free to leave a comment. I'm happy to answer any questions. And yeah, I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.